In Australia, wildfires or bushfires are as ubiquitous as the gum tree, Andrew, that fuels them. It is the price we pay for choosing to live our lives so close to the bush. That's right, Nick, and each summer seems to be getting worse and worse as some corner of the country is devastated by out-of-control blazes. Last year, it was Tasmania's turn. It hit late yesterday afternoon. Temperatures soared to 54.9 degrees at its peak. The firestorm that went past us originally, that hit Dunalley itself, it was just like a freight train. In early January 2013, record high temperatures and strong winds combined to create the perfect firestorm in the southeast of Tasmania. The wind changed and it just come down there at, Jesus, nearly 100 mile an hour. Um, yeah, we were just lucky to get out. The Tasman Peninsula was cut off from the rest of the state and the small town of Dunalley was hit the hardest. More than 100 homes, as well as the school, police station and bakery, all destroyed. Amazingly, nobody was killed in the initial firestorm. Out of the Dunalley fire came many miraculous stories of survival, with people actually having to jump in the water to save their lives. Can you imagine being in there while the inferno raged all around you? Terrifying hours, no doubt, for the people involved. But then, through the ensuing days and weeks ahead, the fire service had to deal with not only the Dunalley fire, but another 40 fires that were raging throughout the state. Those blazes spread across the state and claimed almost 200 buildings, farmland, livestock and thousands of hectares of bush. A volunteer firefighter from Victoria lost his life while battling the Tasman Peninsula fire more than a week after it started. The battle to contain a burning state took a massive amount of manpower for almost three months. Forestry Tasmania workers involved at every level. Forestry Tasmania had involvement from, from the fired round, crews actually out on the fired round, through to people and actually right through the incident management teams and also representation on the State Fire Organisation Committee. While FT crews battled on, one of their colleagues was just coming to terms with what had happened. His community of Connolly's Marsh, just a stone's throw from Dunalley, right in the fire's path. This was the community of Connolly's Marsh being engulfed. So Dan, you not only work for Forestry Taz, but you're also a resident here at Connolly's Marsh, which was one of the areas really hard hit by the fire. That's right, yes mate. Swept down over the hills along the beachfront, down around the back of the creek here, and uh, made uh, quite a mess, yeah. And uh, just behind us here, I guess you had your shed, which was levelled? Yep, absolutely, totally devastated. Cars, boats, everything in it, all and gone. It, and it actually got as close as setting the side of the house on fire? Yeah, we've had to do some rebuilding here, not quite finished yet, but uh, yeah, if it wasn't for the, uh, the water bombing by the choppers, I reckon we would have lost a lot. Well, it is a world away from the bushfires of Dun Alley because it's now spring, it's eight degrees, it's raining, it's windy, it's cold, and bushfires are the last thing on my mind, though. True. It's very easy to get complacent at this time of year. Our weather can change very rapidly, though. All it takes is a few warm days, windy days, the forest will dry out, and we're right back into the fire season. Right back in the middle of it, and that's what makes these courses so important. It is. We try and train our people to be able to handle conditions in this sort of situation, in this sort of forest, as realistic as possible. The nationally accredited four-day course is undertaken by all Forestry Tasmania workers who spend their day jobs in the bush. But all FT staff are encouraged to take part and Dan, who's an IT expert from head office, feels it's his chance to be able to help out come next fire season. Uh, at the time that it was all happening, obviously the focus was on my family and, and taking care of my family. Um, but at the same time, you know, in the back of my mind, there was certainly a feeling that uh, I felt the need to want to be able to contribute, to, to assist. The course includes several theory sessions, but is mostly hands-on, teaching the latest in forest fire fighting, and is set in a bush environment to be as realistic as possible. So the most important thing when you're setting up the dam is knowing what your objective is. The fires are becoming harder. We're getting much more urban interface arrangements, people living out in the country more, so our crews have got to be on the ball and be able to respond much quicker. I've learned a lot of, a lot of great skills, uh, learned a lot about the, the pumps and the handling of the pumps and the pressures and the hose types and the fittings and, and all that sort of stuff and all the techniques and safety, great.
course, is all about making you battle ready, being prepared to fight the fire out on the fire ground, and that includes doing old-fashioned hard labour like cutting a fire break in inaccessible terrain like this. But a better option in this day and age with all the technology available is to stop the fire at its source. Lighting a bushfire at night and from the air is the latest technique being used by forestry workers and it's being developed in Tasmania thanks to a pair of very expensive goggles. Well, night vision goggles were initially developed by the uh, military for um, night operations so they can obviously see the bad guys um, as are either flying around or running around. They've been brought into the civilian environment. We're now taking them over into forestry and emergency services. This allows us as pilots and um, crews to go out at night time and do accurate mapping and fire detection um, in the helicopters in an environment where normally aircraft wouldn't be operating. Proved by CASA, the night vision goggles means fire can be mapped in the cool of night when they're at their calmest. The crew able to fly over every square inch of the blaze and search for the hot spots which will likely flare up the following day. Got a hot spot about my one o'clock low, you got that visual? Yes mate, I've got it now. Yep, mark now Rochelle. But that is a priority one. The hotspots, which are all mapped on a GPS, are identified using an infrared camera called a WASP. A hotspot is something like that can be uh, still burning under a log, and uh, that is a major problem because uh, when our firefighters are out there doing mop up and, and patrol, they can be hidden. So what this does, this is why we do it early hours of the morning when it's the coldest conditions, any sort of heat, this will actually find it if you're pointing it in the right direction. All right, so hotspot. We've all seen the cricket. We've all seen the nicks and the edges and the hotspot used in the cricket environment nugget. But in the firefighting environment, can you demonstrate? This is my cup of coffee. Yes. If I lost it over there, do you think you could find it? Well, how about you go and sit it over there and I'll show you. Oh no, I've lost my coffee. Well, let's see what we can do about this. So what we'll look at here is through the lens. And as we scan around, Look at that. There's my coffee. There's your coffee. And in a fire situation, that would be your hotspot? That is correct. That's what I'm looking for. If we was going out tonight by potentially 5 o'clock tomorrow morning, you should have an up-to-date map at the incident management team for them to go out and start uh, doing a mop-up and patrol on the hotspots. Once the fire crews receive the latest map of the fire front, they can go to exactly where they need to to stop the blaze from spreading the following day by extinguishing the hotspots. We actually don't stop it ourselves, but um, yeah, this, gives, this, is a, this is a really great tool for the um, incident management teams to be able to understand what's happening at night. Um, before this, yeah, we're always sitting on the ground at night. So fire and forestry go hand in hand and every year Forestry Tasmania staff are trained in the skills of forest firefighting. Currently around 150 FT staff battle bushfires when required. While from the air in the dead of night, night vision goggles and wasps are being used to map fires when they're at their calmest, giving new information to ground crews the following morning.